Hey there, welcome to The Uplift. We've got a truly great show for you today. And among our cast of characters, a dog who you might think could use some help himself, instead helping another furry friend. There he is. The man who wanted to show Amazon he can do just as much as any other employee, despite his differences. And the high school senior whose mailbox is absolutely stuffed with hundreds of letters, what he did to earn them. And another teen who's become known as a real life young Sheldon. That means he's a genius. Also, the doctor's office putting no-show fees to good use. Where's the money going? We'll tell you. And the delivery driver who became overwhelmed with emotion because of what he found at a customer's door. All that, plus our most heartwarming videos of the week. You're watching The Uplift. Hey there, I'm Tony DeCopa. Welcome to The Uplift. It is the show that lifts you up for at least the next 30 minutes and hopefully even longer than that. We're going to begin with our most heartwarming videos of the week, beginning with a truly touching one showing a two-year-old Pearson at his mom's wedding. He's there waiting patiently until the moment he saw his mom at the end of the aisle in her wedding dress, and he couldn't help but run to her. Oh, my God. That's why they call them toddlers. That is so sweet. <laughs> oh. All right, moving on to our next story, because we have to. I'm sorry I could linger on that all day. Bringing a new baby home is, of course, pretty exciting news for family members. But these two canine brothers could not contain their excitement when meeting their new human baby sister. Oh, those two fur babies remember when they were new. Little smoochies on the head. Good for the germ biodome. Go ahead, give the baby a lick. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's a very sweet moment. All right, coming up next, we've got another sweet moment between a dad and his baby girl. You're as beautiful? No. Yes, you are. You are beautiful. Did you know that? No. Yes. Cabot kiss. Thank you, booger. Did you oh, know you were beautiful? That's so sweet. Names there are Roy and Rain. And even though she, too, is just two years old, Rain has gained quite the following on social media because of her, as you can see, adorable moments with Dad. Roy's got to be proud. All right, now take a look at this video from a home security camera. Uh, it captures a delivery driver. And we should point out, he's got a, a emoji over his face to protect his identity. Uh, but what happened is what really catches people's eyes. He's discovering a thank you note left to him on the porch from one of his customers. The homeowner, again, covered the face to protect the driver's identity. It's the emotion that matters, though. He was shocked to see money inside the card, and his reaction will touch your heart. Take a close look. Sorry, I'm deaf. You have no idea what you have just done for me. None. I just lost my mom a few days ago, and this money is going to help pay for those bills. Thank you so very much, my angel. This is proof. Mom is still watching over me. What you're seeing there is the delivery driver discovering the money in the card and then using sign language and then using his phone to explain that he's deaf uh, and he just lost his mom and the, the money there in that card was going to help uh, him get through that difficult time in his life. So a beautiful gesture. You never know how big of a difference you're going to make. All right, now let's take a look at another video that recently went viral. It shows 14-year-old Joseph arriving at the airport with his mom, assuming that he, Joseph, is on his way to Chicago. And then he gets a card that shocks him. Take a look. That is shock, and we actually spoke to Joseph. It turns out this surprise trip, all planned by mom, very well deserved. So instead of just showing you the video, we're actually going to introduce you to him and his mom, and Caitlin O'Kane does the introductory story. Take a look. Deanna and Joseph Smith are a mother-son duo who like to try new things. They call them DJO First. Well, um, our DJO First is just something, they're things that we do together for the first time. So it's just part of my name, part of his name, and then first. 14-year-old Joseph has been traveling with his mom since he was two months old. And one of their biggest DJ firsts was starting a business together. I wanted to put puzzles out there with kids of color because I know that kids of color don't really have as much puzzles that 
have kids of color on there. They've since expanded Culture Kids to make more products like a memory card game, as well as the Culture Kids Foundation, which provides free puzzles and games to kids in need. And then a few months ago, we decided that we were going to expand it because there's so many children that don't get the opportunities that Joseph is blessed to have. So we wanted to be able to provide uh, children with the opportunity to go to museums, to go to cultural events and book signings and, and to have that exposure and maybe get them out of their neighborhood so they see a different world. Joseph likes exploring museums and cultural institutions himself. I really like to explore arts for like, for an example, I like to do fashion. I like to, you know, read articles about fashion. I actually get a GQ magazine almost every single month because I like to stay up with the fashion magazines. But when COVID hit, some cultural activities got put on hold. And like many people, Deanna and Joseph had a tough few years. We had a lot of things that just went wrong uh, in our household. I got laid off due to COVID. Joseph was at home uh, schooling virtually, and it was just a really rough time. Fortunately, Deanna is back at work and Culture Kids is back up and running. And when travel opened up, Deanna knew she had to book a trip. She chose Chicago, or so Joseph thought. right now. Open the card and turn the card around to the camera. The video of Joseph went viral, getting more than 1 million likes on TikTok. We're going to Paris. Yes. We're going to Paris. Huh? We're going to Paris. Right now. Right now. Right now. I was I was just ready to go at that instant. As soon as I read you're going to Paris, I was like, where is the flight? Where is the plane? Because I want to get on it right now. Finally, they were able to experience a Dejo first again. We went to the Eiffel Tower, and of course the light show was taking place just as we pulled up to the tower, and it was all lit. And it just really brought it home to me that, oh my gosh, we're like we're really here. We're, <laughs> we're in Paris together. What a sweet story. Nice reveal there. Caitlin O'Kane, Paris, the city of lights. It's a great surprise. All right, coming up, what happens when a dog who's already down a leg himself decides to jump in the water and swim to rescue another animal? We'll show you. Plus, a high school senior who made his dream come true 104 times and counting. Stick around. We'll be right back. Applying to college and waiting for acceptance letters is a big part of senior year for a lot of high schoolers. Well, one student from Rancho Cucamonga High School in Southern California has been visiting college campuses since he was a toddler. His drive to go to school resulted in a very, very full mailbox in his senior year of high school. CBS Los Angeles' Rena Nakano has more. There's a little bit of a problem at Dylan Little's home. Dylan is getting so many things that they don't fit in the mailbox. Universities seem to be fighting over the 18-year-old at Rancho Cucamonga High School. I've applied to around 112 and I was admitted into 104. You heard right, 104 college acceptance letters with $9 million in scholarship funds, but why? I knew that if I started early, like applying to colleges in September, I would just co continually evolve into a better applicant, an applicant that I would be proud of, and that an applicant that I knew would be super competitive for those uber competitive schools. And it worked. The senior with a 4.6 GPA, leader of the Black Student Union, intern for Congresswoman Linda Sanchez, applied to a school in every state. He says it's to honor his family legacy. My great grandmother, who helped raise me, um, you know, because of Jim Crow politics, was not even able to finish school. His single mother, Danielle, says he would visit college campuses as a toddler. Ever since he was young, it was always instilled in him that college was going to happen. 
We spoke to a college counselor off camera who said seniors typically apply to about 10 to 15 schools. He's never heard of anyone applying to over 100, but said that's Dylan's choice. As for the scholarship money Dylan will have to turn down, he said that will likely be reallocated to another student or put back into the university's general fund. I'm not trying to steal away anybody's spot, but you know, in my household, I was raised with like the world was your oyster. National College Decision Day is in just four days, so I asked Dylan, what's it going to be? Princeton, Columbia, and Dartmouth, and I was able to get into Stanford. So he hasn't made up his mind yet, but he says he's proud of his accomplishments and will continue to work hard at whatever challenges come his way. Cast the widest net possible. It's, you never know what's going to happen, and the worst they can say is no. But they're saying yes, they're saying yes a lot. 104 acceptance letters is a lot of eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Congratulations. Gus, the happy golden doodle, had a very bad year. He lost a leg due to a tumor, and then he decided not to let it slow him down. In fact, his battle with cancer gave him an opportunity to test his mettle, rescuing another furry friend. CBS Minnesota's Kristen Mitchell has more. He's a very friendly, happy golden doodle. Despite the wags and kisses, it's been a tough few years for six-year-old Gus. Yeah. Owner Cleo Young says he had a tumor removed, and during a routine follow-up earlier this year, staff at the University of Minnesota found another, leading them to amputate his back leg. We thought, oh, this is going to be so sad, he's, he's not going to be able to run like he used to, but it hasn't slowed him down at all. That was clear Easter Sunday when he jumped into the frigid St. Croix River. It's right here. Grandkids Ella and Lucy watched him from the shore. He was going after something. It was clear, but we didn't know at first. <laughs> he came to shore and he had something in his mouth and it turned out to be a very tiny otter. Covered in sand, they washed him in the sink and rushed to the Wildlife Rehabilitation Center in Roseville. Yeah. It was kind of a harrowing trip because it was closing at 6 o'clock and we, we didn't know if we were going to make it. The team at WRC went right to work, nursing the cold pup back to health. They say if Gus hadn't rescued him, he likely wouldn't have survived. He was really gentle and I think he, he knew it needed help and so he brought it right to us right away. Gus has three more chemotherapy sessions to go, but his battle for his life hasn't stopped him from saving another. It's definitely a really special Easter Sunday, yeah. something we'll remember for a long time. Gus the happy golden, golden doodle, making it look like a viable alternative there. Well done, Gus. All right, coming up, a musical tribute to Ukraine with a twist. Also, the 13-year-old being compared to TV genius young Sheldon and how Sheldon himself is responding. Plus, putting your money to good use, what a Minnesota doctor's office is doing with all those no-show fees. We'll explain. Stick around. There have been a lot of powerful tributes and fundraisers all to help the country of Ukraine, but none quite like this one. 50 piano players helped honor the country and make a very large contribution to Ukrainian refugees, all with a benefit concert streamed around the world. Aret O'Keefe has more. This battle for the people of Ukraine fought not with weapons, but with the power of music. 50 piano pieces by Ukrainian composers played by 50 piano players, raising nearly $90,000 so far. My piano family. The concert arranged by Polly Vanderlinda, who runs the Sonatina Piano Camp in Vermont that I attended as a kid. When you put the call out for volunteers, what was their reaction? They're like, what can we do? We need to do something that makes us feel good, that gives back. And somehow this music took us over and we said, we've got to do this. The Ukrainian pieces performed by professionals and beginners. The oldest performer, 92 years old. The youngest, 16-year-old Ben Wilson. His father, Boris, was born in Crimea. When we reach out across the ocean, um, I, I know that this is felt by those who are fighting to survive. President Zelensky at the Grammy Awards earlier this month. Feel the silence with your music. Feel it today to tell our story. These 50 piano players heard the message, and they're playing like the world is listening. 
and the world is indeed listening. Ed O'Keefe, nice piece. We're going to take you now to California, where a nonprofit there is taking young people to new heights. Chris Van Cleve has that story. Release the brakes. 18-year-old Alicia Arnold's dream of flying for an airline began to soar after a chance encounter with a woman pilot. I used to always think only like men could do it, and so I saw her and I was like, yeah, I can do this, and now here I am. Arnold and about 40 others, ages 8 to 18, spend their Saturdays at Fly Compton, a Southern California nonprofit aimed at introducing inner-city kids to aviation. Are there students that you see in your class that you expect to see in an airline cockpit one day? Yeah, I would say about 40 to 50 percent of the kids. I'll see them in the cockpit for sure. There we go. Alaska Airlines pilot Ron Norman is one of Fly Compton's founders. The idea came early in the pandemic as a way to pay their aviation successes forward. You're up. You send a message that you can do it. I mean, a guy like me from Compton, California, uh, making it to this point, you definitely can do it. 93% of U.S. pilots are white, and only about 5% are women. Less than 1% are women of color. Seeing people who look just like me living this dream, it's just like, wow, I can become part of this community and hopefully make it grow as well. What's the altitude, 1,000? Soaring to new heights and proving the sky is her only limit. Oh, yeah. So-called no-show fees for skipping appointments keep you from playing hooky too often when it comes to the doctor, but there's a medical office that does not feel bad when it charges you late fees, and those who pay them may not mind either. CBS Minnesota's Kate Raditz has more. No-show fees can be a little taboo. You miss an appointment, you pay a fee. I didn't want to just take the money, I wanted to do something good with it. At Tureen Dermatology, the fee has always been a donation. It's about 1% of our visits are no-shows. Um, we've had, you know, some extra thousands of dollars that we want to give to worthwhile charities. Each year during Ramadan, the Tureens and staff choose a different cause. This year, they decided to help newly settled Afghan families find housing. In order to, to rent Many of these apartments and landlords require uh, tenant history, um, which of course you don't have if you just came to this country. So they bought this house using the $50,000 in no-show fees, along with money from cosmetic events to make the down payment. Now a family of six that fled Afghanistan after the Taliban takeover last year has a roof over their head in Minneapolis. They were helping the U.S. military when they were in Afghanistan, and they had to get here. So we wanted to, you know, help show them that America can be a good place for them. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We spoke to the mother of four on the phone about the family's new home. I like American. American is very go good. Dr. Mohiba Tareen is an Indian immigrant. She says the customers have come to embrace the no longer taboo no-show fees. And I feel every day that I need to give back to my community and in general, America. Oh, sweet story. All right, coming up, we're going to introduce you to a real life young Sheldon. Also the deaf Amazon employee stepping into a new role at the company. His example ahead. When you're 13 years old, you're likely not thinking about college or getting a Ph.D. for that matter, unless you're young Sheldon, or, as it turns out, if you're young Elliot Tanner. CBS Minnesota's Carolyn Cummings introduces us to a very accomplished teen. That's pretty cool. Elliot Tanner is just like any 13-year-old. So I like to play Dungeons and Dragons with friends and sometimes also some video games, too. Except for the fact that he can solve this. So I have an incredible passion for physics. It's been one of my favorite things to do. He's pursuing that passion at the University of Minnesota, where he's studying for a bachelor's degree when most kids his age aren't yet in high school, keeping a 3.78 GPA and doing undergraduate research, too. A neutrino is a tiny, fast-moving neutral particle that will go through about a light year of lead and hardly even interact with it. Wow. <laughs> and what we're trying to do is we're trying to detect those. When he graduates next month, he won't be going far. He's coming back in the fall for a PhD. That is very exciting. How's it move? 
Yes, Asimov. If Elliot Tanner's story sounds like it's made for TV, in some ways it already is. Uh -huh. And I think the awesome thing about him is he is very, very smart. Like possibly even smarter than Sheldon. Ian Armitage plays Sheldon Cooper, boy genius in Young Sheldon on CBS. But when the cameras aren't rolling, he calls Elliot a real boy genius, his friend. A bond formed when he came to visit the set and one that stayed strong since. Ian is such an amazing friend and he's so great to be around. The thing that I love about Young Sheldon and Big Bang Theory is it really makes being a nerd like Cool. When Elliot's done studying at the U, he dreams of once again returning, then as a professor to share his passion with others. I feel like I would love to be able to spread some of this joy for physics and enthusiasm for it around. Being a nerd is cool. I wish I knew what a neutrino is. I guess now I do. Thank you, young Elliot Tanner. All right, moving on, we're going to introduce you now to Eduardo Tejada, an Amazon employee who is not only breaking barriers at work, but teaching his coworkers skills they had not learned before and probably would not have learned without him. CBS Baltimore's Stetson Miller has a story. Eduardo de Deja had a simple goal when he came to work for Amazon in 2020. I wanted to prove that I'm able to do anything just as a hearing person. You know, the one thing about me is that I just can't hear. Eduardo is deaf, but that hasn't stopped him from working in any role at the company's BWI2 Fulfillment Center in East Baltimore. I want to show that I can do everything with my deafness. Speaking through an interpreter, he tells me he was eager to move up in the company to show that he could work in many different roles despite the fact that he can't hear. I feel that there isn't really anything disabled about me. He started off by storing incoming inventory at the center, then became a learning ambassador and started training new employees. And he's now a process assistant, making sure employees are meeting goals. He is the very first deaf employee to work his way up into that role. We're super excited to see Eduardo shine and can't wait to see what else he does here at BWI2 with us. He's also taught other employees about deaf culture and has certainly been breaking barriers for the hearing impaired community. I want them to see that, you know, become a role model for other people and an inspiration. That's a great story. Never underestimate somebody. He's not underestimating himself. That is our show. I hope it brightened your day and lifted you up. If it didn't, go ahead and watch it again. No extra charge. We'll see you next week.